Vice President Biden is calling the shots in Ukraine, while George Soros is paying demonstrators in Belarus, and more historical revisionism about protecting socialist property rights. Welcome to Stop Fake, the place where we debunk Russian disinformation about Ukraine and a little more. So let's get to it. Back in August, on the eve of Ukrainian Independence Day, a photograph of former Vice President Joe Biden in the Ukrainian parliament began to be massively circulated on social media. The Post claimed that the photograph showed Biden sitting in the presidential chair, while then-President Petro Poroshenko was sitting on the side, attentively listening to his boss. This photograph was circulated with other captions, all of them insinuating that Washington was running Ukraine. However, this fake about Joe Biden sitting in the Ukrainian president's chair is six years old. In reality, the photograph was taken in 2014 during Biden's meeting with Ukrainian parliamentarians, and the fake about him sitting in the Ukrainian president's chair was started by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who said, quote, Essentially, Joe Biden held a meeting with Ukraine's leadership as a head of state. He sat at the head of the table surrounded by Ukrainian representatives on either side, Lavrov said. Now, the photograph was taken in the Vrkhovna Rada conference room on April 22, 2014, a conference room in Ukraine's parliament. The chair in which Biden is sitting is not the presidential chair, as Lavrov claims. It is simply a chair at the head of a table in which guests of honor are seated, heads of delegations, or chairmen of ongoing meetings, as well as any diplomats, officials, or members of parliament. Furthermore, the U.S. Vice President was not surrounded by Ukrainian government representatives listening to Biden's orders. Sitting on the left side of the table under the American flag are U.S. diplomats, including then-U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine Jeffrey Pyatt. On the right side of the table under the Ukrainian flag flag are Ukrainian parliament members with whom Biden was meeting. Petro Poroshenko and Mayor Vitaly Klitschko are in the photograph because in 2014 they were members of parliament. And it's important to note that the presidential elections which Poroshenko won took place on May the 25th, 2014, one month after the photograph was taken. At the time the photo was taken, Alexander Turchinov was acting president of Ukraine, not Poroshenko. The facts will always break down Russian disinformation. Against the backdrop of continuing protests and strikes in Belarus in opposition to the falsified presidential elections and the use of violence against peaceful protesters, all sorts of fakes and distortions continue to be disseminated on social media. One such fake alleges to show protesters being paid for participating in the demonstrations. In fact, the photo in question captures a spontaneous protest in Grodno on August the 23rd, 2020, where people collected money for sound equipment. The photograph is accompanied by comments like suggesting that the mass protests against the incumbent Belarusian president Alexander Lukashenko are paid for by financier and philanthropist George Soros. But in the lower right-hand corner of the photograph, one can see the copyright of the Radio Liberty Belarusian Language Service. These photographs can be found on the Radio Liberty website with the caption, Collecting Funds for Equipment at the Rally in Grodno, where more than 3,200 rubles were collected. Now, on August the 23rd, a spontaneous demonstration began gathering in Grodno on Lenin Square against the political situation in what the country and what the people of Belarus believe to be yet another election stolen by Alexander Lukashenko, who has ruled Belarus for 26 years. As the meeting began spontaneously and without any actual organization, there was no sound equipment present. A demonstrator who participated in the protest told the local tut.py news site how people collected money for a microphone and other sound equipment to accommodate the protest. As protesters began complaining that they couldn't hear anything, they decided to collect money on the spot and within 15 minutes the necessary funds were collected and a group of protesters went off to get the necessary gear. Video of the spontaneous collection in Grodno can be found on Radio Liberty's Telegram account. During this past summer, another historical distortion denying Stalinist repressions was spreading on social media. Posts about the 1932 Soviet law on the protection of socialist property, better known as the Zakon o Koloskach, or the Law of Spikelets, attempt to justify the cruelty of the Soviet system towards its own citizens. According to a post on Facebook, thanks to this law, the plundering of socialist Soviet property was suppressed and went on to claim that Stalin's repressions weren't really that horrible and were only aimed at, quote-unquote, strengthening the Soviet economy and not the destruction of its own people. The DNR Iskra website claims this law broke the back of the Soviet shadow economy and temporarily helped rid the USSR of underground millionaires, according to the Svoboda Naya Prasa publication. 
But in fact, this Stalinist law led to a man-made famine in parts of the Soviet Union, and particularly in Ukraine, where the Holodomor claimed millions of lives and has been recognized as a genocide. Now, the law of spikelets, or the law of three spikelets, was a law in the Soviet Union to protect the state collective farms, especially the grain they produced from theft. Although the formal name of the law was a lot longer, the common version came into use because the law was used to prosecute those who gleaned as little as a handful of grain or a spikelet left behind in the fields after the entire harvest was officially collected. According to Ukrainian historian Sergei Romanko, Russian demographers knew about the human losses of the collectivization policies. In total, about 7 million people starved to death in the former Soviet Union during 1933. 4 million of those were victims of the Holodomor, the man-made famine in Ukraine. Another 1 to 1.5 million died from hunger in Kazakhstan. The rest of the victims lost their lives in the Volga region on the Don in the Kuban. Romanko also says that Russian propaganda that claims there were no casualties during this time is a pure lie. In 1933, the death rate in Ukraine reached catastrophic proportions. 28,000 people died every day, 1,168 died every hour, 20 Ukrainians died every minute, according to Romanko. The Stalin regime used the confiscation of food from peasants as a weapon of mass destruction. Food was forcibly taken from farmers, and starving peasants were forced to sell their last belongings that had not been confiscated by the Soviet authorities for a pittance. In 2006, the Ukrainian parliament officially recognized the 1932-1933 Holodomor as a genocide of the Ukrainian people. According to the latest data, the Holodomor is recognized as an act of genocide by 15 UN member states. The European Parliament and the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe have recognized the Holodomor as a crime against humanity and a crime of the Soviet regime against its own people. That's it for this week. Be vigilant, stay safe, and be on the lookout for fakes. Remember that washing your hands and social distancing will protect you from the coronavirus, while critical thinking will protect you from Russian disinformation. And if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.